Hey everyone, this is your host Zainul Hassan and in today's video we will install dependencies resolver so without any further ado, let's get started. As you can see here that it's still in a beta version so there may be some issues when you use it so if you encounter any of the issue you can always come here and report that issue. So this will be really helpful to fix the bugs in the dependency is resolver now one more thing is that uh, there are a lot more features coming in the newer version as you can see in this pull request there are a lot of fixes and there are a lot of updates that are on their way now you may ask that what is the need of this dependency resolver and why you should use it in your projects now let's uh, assume a pretty simple case that you want to create a Firebase Analytics extension and for that you will obviously require a Firebase Analytics jar file. So you will uh, open up the repository and just download this jar file and after you, that you will just compile your extension and when you use it you will get a lot of unknown errors that field resolution of this clause and that clause and so on. So uh, why are these errors? Now if you see here at the bottom you can see that there are three compiled dependencies. So what are these compiled dependencies? Now you thought that only downloading this uh, jar file for Firebase Analytics will do the work but no. You only downloaded the jar file for Firebase Analytics but it internally depends upon these three files which is place services measurement, measurement API and measurement SDK. Now this will obviously cause errors as you haven't installed these dependencies along with the jar file of Firebase Analytics. So uh, here dependencies resolver come into play and this will help you to not only download the jar file that you need but also the dependencies upon which the jar file depends. So this is a really awesome, really helpful tool that I will recommend you to use in your project. Now let's see how you can install it. So for that open up uh, the wiki right here. Now uh, the main issue that you will encounter in the installation is that it depends upon Java 11. But uh, in most cases when you are developing Android extensions, you are developing extensions for Kotlin, App Inventor etc. You will want to use Java 8 in your environment because if you use Java 11 uh, your extensions won't compile. So to fix this issue is quite simple you can use SDK manager or there is another way of manually switching between these. So I won't do the manual um, switching I will install SDK manager as it is really simple and straightforward to use. Now to install SDK manager uh, you will use git bash if you are on windows or if you are on mac you can use shell if you are on windows there are issues that uh, git bash will recognize almost all the commands that are required in installation but it doesn't know how to deal with zip command so uh, to fix this we will install um, zip command inside our system variables so to do so just click on this uh, link right here and it will take you to the installation. And next here you can just select the place where you want to save your file. So I will save it on my desktop and just start the download. So the file is really small and you won't have to wait. Now after the download is complete you just right click on it and extract it to a folder. Now when our folder is extracted I will uh, save it on my C drive. Now go to the desktop and right click copy inside the C drive paste it here. You can uh, just save it anywhere you want but I will just keep it inside the C drive. Now next thing that you want to do is add the path for bin file inside the environment variables. So again we will edit the environment variables and here click on environment variables now inside the system variables there should be a path variable if you don't have a path variable just click on uh, new and here you can create the path variable and add the value that you want. So in this case the value would be the bin directory that we will add just now. 
now click on the path variable that is available to you inside the system variables and here click on browse next we need to find the folder uh, in which we have extracted the zip command and then you can see that in it's inside the C drive so I will go inside the C drive and then I will just click on this pin folder now our zip command is installed successfully so the next thing that you will do is we will download SDK manager right click and copy this command and next we will open up git bash here let me zoom in a little bit so you can see now here right click and paste and hit enter now as you can see that the installation is successful now we need to add the path variable for SDK manager now after the command of installation you will find this source command just right click copy from source to the end quotation mark and then again we will just paste it inside our git bash now uh, our path variable is properly set you can just type in sdk and it will surely uh, get you some details about sdk manager so our sdk manager is installed properly now we need to do is we need to install java 11 now right click and again paste the command here sorry we need to copy this and then paste it inside here so what this will do is install java 11 now you might be wondering that you can install java 11 directly but uh, again that will cause issues so uh, i will explain it to you so suppose if you have installed java 8 and java 11 both on your device now in order to access java 8 you will first have to set your path variable to java 8 but when you want to use java 11 you will again have to change that path variable and set it to java 11 now this would be really uh, difficult and you will again have to change the path from java 8 and java 11 so this becomes really tedious so the best way to do is install sdk manager and then whenever you want to use java 11 you just use sdk use command now the installation is complete and you can see that it has uh, set java 11 as the default now you can check the java version right here and it should be 11 as you can see right here that it's 11 next what we will do is open up uh, the repository and next uh, here we will open up the releases page here you can see that there are uh, three releases but we want to download the jar files from the latest release so here scroll down and find uh, the dependencies resolver latest jar file and we need to download both of these uh, alpha all jar file and the graphical user interface jar file so click on this and save it wherever you want so i will save it on the desktop now download this gui file and save it wherever you want once the download is complete i will create a new folder and you can name it whatever you want i will rename it to dependencies resolver without any space and next i will copy these jar file inside this folder now open up this folder and right click here and open up git bash here now once git bash is open you need to run this command java dash version to check what version are you using inside this panel so we are using java 11 inside this panel so what i will do is i will say java dash jar and then uh, you just need to copy the name of this GUI file now this will open up the program file for you and here you can enter a gradle dependency or an artifact information now that is it for this video in the next video you will see how you can use 
this dependency resolver graphical user interface to download different dependencies for your project till then stay tuned thanks for watching